Hey, everybody. Welcome to VO Buzz Weekly. Hey, we are back with part two. Thanks for joining us with Harvey and Kathy Kalmanson. Let's get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. So what other trends do you, were you thinking of? There's a trend I like to call experiential. Okay. okay. Experiential. Experiential, mm -hmm. yes. That's her own word. Thank you. I didn't make it up. It's in the dictionary. <laughs> All right. It's the word that I describe as your own experience. So in other words, you're personally engaged. You're not trying to engage yeah. or enroll people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give an example that you might go, really? Remember the uh, when Harry met Sally? You saw that? Yes. yes. The, really? The, no. the fake orgasm scene? Oh, yes. Okay, okay yes. God. All right, well. I'm having um, what she's having. Yes, exactly. Well, it wasn't necessarily the salad or sandwich or whatever it was that she was eating. Right. It was whatever got her that feeling. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have what you're having. That's what I've been telling people lately when we're directing. Uh, mm -hmm. I say, you know, don't try to engage or enroll. We want what you're having. If we can get it through you that you're there and experiencing it, yeah. fabulous. We want that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you are no longer responsible for selling this product. Just experience it and we'll get it through yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, can we take a little detour here sure. and, and talk a little bit about how you guys the whole proposal thing mm -hmm. and how that whole thing happened because because <laughs> this is really cool and you okay. asked him yes i did yes, okay yes, we, did. how did yeah. this all happen okay. well first of all we know that when you saw her you were like you went to that wine cellar and called your uh, mom and no, said and what that, that's a, one, a marvelous question and we'll use it as part of what we do for living because she's now going to reflect okay all right Reflect. Yeah. We'll have this your version of, of your version. <laughs> yeah, Pardon very okay. keyword. When we method. reveal the method, okay. you're going to see how this comes yes. into play. Yes, this okay. is very true. So, on that you know day in LA yeah. when I uh, arrived and had a, a wonderful interview, I did meet the man I would someday mm -hmm. ask to marry me. So, eleven years later, <laughs> he still hadn't asked. Really? Right. So he took me on a weekend <laughs> getaway to San Ynez wine country, and everybody at at the office said you know, good luck, like it was going to happen. Do your nails. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And um, it didn't happen. So on the ri ride home, um, I said, you know, people thought maybe we were going to get hitched, get engaged this weekend, and that didn't happen. He says nothing. He keeps driving, smiling, staring at the road. I'm like, mm-hmm. So I thought, next weekend is Sadie Hawkins' weekend, because my birthday was February 20th, mm -hmm. and then uh, the 29th is Sadie Hawkins' day, leap year, and that's supposedly when a woman can ask. And not that I needed that kind of day, but it just so happened. Right. So I was like, fine, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. So <laughs> I had a giant fortune cookie custom made, dipped in white chocolate and dark chocolate, and inside was a fortune. Uh, of course, it was all cellophane, and after a candlelight dinner at my place, uh, I said, he said, that what? you cooked? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my I God. I am my favorite chef. That. Yes. I Me am. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell him about turkey so, in the drawer. One moment. <laughs> so what happened was he said, what do you want from me, Kathy? What do you want from me? And I said, it's time for dessert. So I brought this out. And he said, what is that? And I said, it's dessert. Here, open it. He says, nah, you open it. And I said, no, you open it. So he opened it up. And he opened and read that. And the fortune said, the beautiful blonde woman who loves you cannot imagine her life without you in it. Will you marry her, Harvey? And, I'm cry. and then through the candlelight, I looked at him, <laughs> yeah. and I was nodding, and he and he said unequivocally yes. He said those two words. Unequivocally, unequivocally yes. yes. I told you, I'm yes. a man of lettuce. And so um, we we hugged <laughs> and you, said, oh my you, god, you have a scala. And then yeah. we uh, we were you know we go to a lot of theater as casting directors. We mm -hmm. go see people, and there was a closing night of a show at the Matrix on Melrose. So we went, had a wonderful. We went backstage and you know raised a glass, and we said, you know, we just got engaged. Everyone, they just got engaged. Oh. That was a lovely, that gave lovely me evening. You so, guys. and you know what? He framed the fortune. Oh. We have it in our home. I right? hope so. <laughs> How did you feel that moment when she said those words, or you read them? How did you feel? Um, I knew the time had come. I, I, if I said to you I was frightened, it wasn't true, because uh, I've been through a few things in my life, so I don't scare mm -hmm. too easily. But it still wasn't the reality. The big reality came when we were at the John, John Hancock building in Chicago 96th. on the 95th floor yes. getting married. 
And for the first time in my life, in you a group of people, you had a fear of heights? I lost my voice <gasps> no. when the minister was doing oh. his number. And then he finishes, and Kathy has to read well, your vows. Vows, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't even remember that word. <laughs> the vows, and it came turn, my turn to read my vows. <laughs> I went, uh, had you guys written your own vows? Yes. Oh. yes. I said, whatever she said, that's my vow. You did a ditto? I did a ditto. <laughs> he dittoed her? Well, I dittoed her. A little this more sounds like that. Seinfeld. <laughs> he dittoed her. Yeah. He did that's what she said. And the people who knew me, who uh, this uh, CPA was at the, the wedding. He says, I've never seen you speechless before. Wow. Because what was running through my mind was, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is real. I'm getting married again. I had been married before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, because this is the one that counted. So you were like, yeah. this is no joke. Now, this is the real now, deal. Now, I want to know something. And you, maybe you never even asked this or even <laughs> said this out loud. <laughs> ask me. <laughs> I'm going to ask me. I'm going to ask you. Right. Um, when you first laid eyes on her. Yes. All right. What were you, what did you think? Were you like I was freshly separated and I was horny. <laughs> you ask me, I'm telling you the truth. You're not being clear. I don't <laughs> understand. Did you? You don't understand horny, yeah? Because did you guys did you, you guys start dating shortly thereafter or the next started, day? Well, he he took me to breakfast on my first day. At Norms. Aww. We went Norms. to breakfast at Norms. Yes. Hey, I don't spare yeah. the expense. And yeah. then we started Thanks. bike riding at the marina. That was mm -hmm. our thing. We started bike riding yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. So, so was this like a little thing that just started like kind of right away? Almost. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd say Almost. so. For we me, know yeah. we've yeah. we've yeah. known each other a long time. Yes. So. That's cool, man. Yeah. So yeah. see, he yeah. digged you right from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I've always been a mustache kind of gal. You know, I, I was like, born with this. Well, you, you know? got a good one, I yeah. gotta say, man. And plus if I was gonna have one, it'd look like that. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's well, good and uh, yeah. he drove a 280Z, you know. And, yeah, until uh, somebody and stole knew, it in front of my house. And yeah. he knew a lot. This man had lots of answers. I used yeah. to take notes after yeah. our date. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. how darling. So we have been talking a little, giving little tidbits mm -hmm. about, the you method. know, things that are behind mm -hmm. the method, mm -hmm. the Kalmanson and Kalmanson method. By the way, for those of you that don't know, that don't live in LA, or even the ones that don't, that have never taken any coaching or anything at the Kalmansons, it's not just a class. Yeah. It is a method of how to be an amazing voice actor. So go to Kalmanson.com, it's mm -hmm. right there on the screen, and read more about it, but we're gonna get a little Absolutely. A little so teaser. give us a little tidbit of what you can. What is this method? Where did it come from? And how does it help people? Well, to begin with, everything we use comes from the the greats of the past. I think I mentioned that Stanislavski mm -hmm. and he introduced things that had never been done before in the theater. Uh -huh. Okay. The first time uh, people came in to see a play and it was called a seagull and it was the first time the actors were on stage with their backs to the audience mm -hmm. and the audience didn't know how to deal with that and he had them in his hands because in that moment when the curtain went up Stanislavski grabbed him wow we haven't seen this before and he didn't let his leading person come across the stage right at the beginning because historically what they did in the theater the lead person came on they still do it today and everybody applauds he didn't want that and he stressed in his method that this is a process. It's a process that goes for years. Mm -hmm. And who you are today as a human being is not where you're gonna be five years so from true. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, okay, I'm gonna use that in this commercial situation. And the first time I used it was I was on faculty at USC and it was on a College of Continuing Education thing. and. Excuse me, I have to go back a little step. I was taking a class, uh, I believe they called it Romeo and Juliet, and John Hausman was conducting the class mm -hmm. at uh, USC. Mm -hmm. The place was jam-packed, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all of this stuff I had read was coming to life because he was able to take stuff and put it into its most simple terms mm -hmm. for the actor and for human beings. Mm -hmm. And I right. said, wait a second, this isn't acting. This isn't performing. This is a way of telling the truth. This is a method of telling the mm -hmm. truth. How can we can do this thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and we talked about putting something in your head before you open your mouth. And we said, let's tell people what happens when you open your mouth and talk. And we convinced people, this is mechanical. It has no brain. True. Mm -hmm. This tells this what to do. Mm -hmm. You better get something going on up here before you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to begin talking before you even get into that script that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And do talk to the person. Talk to that person. Yeah. Ask them a question or make up a question that they're asking you. Right, right. Either you're asking them or they're asking you. And in any event, that's called being responsive. Them to you and you to them and you to yourself if you want to do what they call stream of consciousness. Ask yourself a question. Okay. How you doing today? How you doing today, Chuck? You talking to me? I'm talking to you. I'm doing and you really could, good. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And the first thing you said to me when I came up, how you doing, Harv? Great, great. Yeah. Right? That's the beginning of the method. I can go on and on I'm and on. And you will go good. on for 12 weeks when yeah. you go to Kalmanson.com <laughs> yes. and you sign up. And you know yes. what? Yes. Every one of our... We thank you for capsulizing that because I know it's, it's a it's huge really tough. question. It's but really tough because yeah. it but is a process. Yeah. And, and by the yeah. way, that right there, that mm -hmm. single little thing that you were just talking Such about... Such a game changer. ...is the hardest thing for any voice actor to do mm -hmm. is just being able to internalize and instantly mm -hmm. verbalize as your own. Mm -hmm. and because person, you say, well, how's my voice sound? Right. So That's right. Yeah. And I don't, my, I what kind of voice am I to do for this? Mm -mm. You're not going to do I won't a voice. stand for that. I yeah. have to get them out of that. Okay. Yeah. You kick uh, them out of class, you're like, yeah. you're out. <laughs> yeah. How about asking me, how do I feel? <laughs> What's going on in your life, Harv? <laughs> Yeah. It's because yeah. one of these days you're going to ask me, I'm talking to the actor, one of these mm -hmm. days you're going to ask me, I'm going to fall over and drop dead mm -hmm. from the surprise <laughs> that you care about anybody but yourself. Ah. You're so involved with yourself yeah. that you can't be responsive to another person. You wonder why you're not booking? Mm. Mm -hmm. You're not booking because no one likes you. Mm. No, but that's so right. true. Right. I mean, that, right. Is, that is true. Come on, it, there, everything is baloney. Yeah. yeah. You like somebody, they've ingratiated themselves, or you feel sorry for them, or something, or get away. Maybe the, Kathy will tell you a trend uh, that were, came up of these people who are kind of sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and low key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, please, I'm not going to yeah. even raise Whatever. my voice. I, go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe it takes somebody to do that. Yeah. Totally. Okay. If you're not yeah. selling, we're buying. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't sell it, and we'll buy it. There you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. yeah. John Krasinski. Yeah. That's that throwaway mm -hmm. snarky little mm -hmm. read thing that sure. you're talking about, mm -hmm. sure. you know? Oh, there's so many yeah. Yeah, and there's so many yeah. people like that. So what we do is when we're given that prototype, say, um, we don't want the actor to go, so what does he sound like? What we do is we define the prototype by an attitude. Mm -hmm. So if you could say kind of boyish snark, let's just say that, boyish yeah. snark. Right. Okay. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I'm doing a John Krasinski That's right. impersonation. That's right. So the, all our actors will see on the Kalmanson scripts will be boyish snark. Mm. Yep. And sometimes the ad agency didn't even use those words. They just used the prototype, but right. we right. know better. Right. So right. we've right. got to right. translate that to right. actor speak. Right. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am so excited. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about auditions. Mm -hmm. You listen to a lot of them. You direct a lot of them. Tons. So let's talk about what are you listening for in an audition that goes, yep, they're moving on. Got it. Well, I would like to say first that... I listen to often a demo tape before. Notice I said demo tape. That's oh my God, it's still from the past. Yeah, a lot of people still call yeah, them we demo still tapes. That. Anyway, I'll listen to a demo. And here, here's my little proof thing that these, this might, person might be right for it. I've got to hear if their truth aligns with the truth in the script of what they're yeah. looking for. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to two things. One, clarity of signature, that they know who they are. Because if you don't know who you are, how are we going to know who you are? Exactly. You've got to capture that on your demo. Truly, your demo is your walking... You, it's the audio version of you. Right. You know, if, if we can't see you in person, we've got to know who you are. So what's going to represent you? So I'm listening for clarity of signature and acting skills. And the acting skills are manifest by uh, ability to transition from attitude to attitude, not just from script to script, but from in one script, trans transitions of attitudes mm -hmm. in skills. one script. Mm -hmm. Skills, but not techniques. Right. right. Mm -hmm. That's hard to explain also. Yep. Mm -hmm. don't, don't give me tricks. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. tr tricks are for dogs. Right. right. Okay. 
Uh, Tricks are for kids. No, Tricks exactly. are for kids. <laughs> That's right. They or, are for kids. Or for hookers. <laughs> what? Oh, my oh, God. Yes. Uh, did Harvey. that ruin everything Ba-dum-bum. for you? We're going to no. bleep Ba-dum-bum. that out. <laughs> Good. I hope so. You've heard. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so then that, that person might <laughs> then get the opportunity to be on the audition. Mm-hmm. Then the audition, you know, Kalmanson, we direct. So all- you will you will vet through demos yes, to even yes. get the audition. Yeah, even let's roll let's roll it back. So we get uh, an email from big ad agency somewhere in America, and they say, guess what? We need this. You know, give us a call. We'll have a conference call with the creative team. Mm-hmm. This is where the team says what they say right. and we're listening going yes and taking it all in and then we're doing translating, translating. their speak into actor sp- uh, agent speak we then send out a breakdown to the agents in town there are 29 voiceover departments currently in LA that you know are on the mainstream yeah. and we put out a comments and email blast to all of them and we basically say here's what they are looking for here's what we're looking for conflict when it works what it pays all that good stuff and then we give the description and then they'll give us names so we get all these lists of names and then we go, th- I say, of course it's him. Oh, my God. And of course it's him. Oh, my God. But who's he? You know, they're signing new people all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I need to get a, give a listen. If they think that I write for it, I need to. So I quickly go online. I'll listen on an online voice type bank sure. and then listen. And then suddenly I'll say, yep, he's great. Or no, but it's good to know him. He'd be better for something else. Now, that just gave them the opportunity to audition. Did you know that Cal- we direct all our auditions? Yes. We don't go, ah, oh, yeah. your audition is in and yours is out. We direct them all. So we're in control of every yeah. take. People yeah. go to your yes. place yeah. to audition. Yeah. And you know what? Um, uh, our half day of casting is 24 directed auditions. We don't see 78 people and call it done. I was going to say, 24. you guys really We just go right think. to the 24. Mm-hmm. We could have whoever you know we think is right. Yeah. So we may oversubscribe by a few just in case for flat, flat tires or whatever people don't show. Um, and maybe our client will get a few extra bonus voices. But truly, we are going to pull in the people who by nature by nature or what we're looking for yeah. and are directable and have the mm-hmm. skills. So once yeah. I bring the right people in, then Harv will bring it out yeah. and yeah. then we <clears throat> submit them all. Oftentimes, the number of people is, that we bring in is increased because the ad agency's original call has been changed. They change from men to women, from oh, women to men, yeah. from mm-hmm. kids to blah, 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 blah. And, or now we want ethnicity. Now we don't want ethnicity. We can start out on a call and Kathy will tell you, it turns into a week's work worth of work because they're making their mind up and they're doing things and other little tricks they do is they're not sure of their scripts and so they send us a couple of scripts and the next thing you know they say uh you didn't hit it right translation we didn't miss it you're gonna pull and i tell some of our younger people in there we didn't miss anything watch they're gonna send us different trips sure enough there comes new scripts Mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah. There's nothing wrong with the actors, but that's the way right. the game is today. Right. Yeah, of course. Why, why, do you think, why do you think you're such an effective director in audition situations? Yeah, Harv. Uh, yeah. Why don't you brag about yourself a little? Come you're on, so Harv. shy over there. Well, well yeah. you know what? It's, so not a question of, it's not a question of bragging. It's a question of... Why can you pull out those performances? Why do I get there? Uh, I, I, there's an intensity about me. And I, and I don't let people get away with something. Mm-hmm. Right. I want the end result. This is not the Harvey Kalmanson show. And I point out to them, I'm a professional listener. I give you a direction, and now I'm listening to you. I'm not planning what I'm going to have to say to you next. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about that. I know what to say next. It'll come to me. Okay? But I'm your ears, and I'm your eyes. Okay? And the people who have become successful with me have learned to trust me. Okay, they yeah. know I'm That's not going to be talking mm-hmm. just to hear myself talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not afraid of anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, the number of people that I've directed, I mean, for crying out loud, I cut my teeth on Orson Welles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Easiest guy in the world to direct. Everybody really? walk up, please. All you had to do was not talk to hear yourself talk. You're dealing with a guy who is a certified genius, yeah. right? He knows more about what you're doing when he first looks at that script than anybody else in the room. Yep. Okay. So if you're a young person and you've had some background in theater, maybe you'll learn something. Let the guy do his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does his thing and makes some kind of a statement and then turns to me and says, would you like something else? And I was learning so much about how he used his breath as part of his delivery. Mm-hmm. There was no airspace. Yeah. He filled with, hmm. Uh, he took a breath and it sucked you in. Yeah. 
if you listen, you're going to learn something from mm -hmm. them. And I think a lot of actors today have to learn how to listen. Be open. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You don't know everything. They don't want to listen. Yeah. And yeah. learn how to listen and stop listening yeah. to themselves. Right. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy, yes. why don't you give us your interpretation of why Harvey is such an effective mm -hmm. director? I would love to. It's like the newlywed game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to surprise him and use a word that usually isn't in his vocabulary. And it's called namaste. Namaste. Ah. And that is, you know what that is? Yes. yes. In yoga, of it's course. the highest place in me, mm -hmm. acknowledges the highest place in you, right? Mm -hmm. And even though Harvey does not practice yoga, he practice, he walks the walk as a human being. Because he, when he first meets somebody, he holds a high place for them. Yeah. He mm -hmm. gives them the most credit, and then people disappoint him. That's uh, what happens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They, on, for a variety of reasons, on their own path, they fall short for whatever reason. Yeah. But he starts out holding a high place for them. Mm -hmm. And they see that. Yeah. You know, that, that he does. Secondly, he has a fantastic vocabulary, a great command of the words. So he carefully chooses the right word, and hopefully, and then he looks and sees who he's dealing with, and he mm -hmm. realizes realizes they may or may not know that word if they're too young or whatever that right. thing is and he adjusts right. accordingly. Right. Also, a great director is a great audience. Yep. He is a good audience. He is responsive to people. He wants people to be responsive. He's responsive to them. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So not only has he is a great director with a super vocabulary and yeah. sensitivities, he's a great audience. And then he also becomes the actor. He's three things, yep. which is what a director is, three things. Right. You're the director, you're the audience, and you become the actor on some yeah. level. And that's what he does. So fast. Harvey. Look at you, Harvey. I gotta tell you, man. Solid. I think, you have, I think, I think your wife is a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Amen. I, you know what? You should let her talk for you. <laughs> totally. <laughs> just, just say, yeah, no wonder just what say, she said. Just say, Kathy. Right? Ditto. At the marriage. See, you know that's how you I, couldn't top it. I, I've said, when, when I was playing ball, I always felt that it's a God-given gift and you can improve and go as hard as you can and mm -hmm. play as hard as you can. Yeah. But consider yourself fortunate that you got the gift. And don't get carried away with yourself yeah. just because mm -hmm. you can throw a ball. Yeah. Okay. And the same thing, most of the actors are nice people. But every so often, you know, you get a stinker. Yeah. <laughs> a person who doesn't care about anybody but themselves has no stinker. place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? They're and when an actor is so is self involved. Mm -hmm. Come on, I've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I really don't need that. Yeah. What are some things, speaking to our global actors out there, uh -huh. what are some things that you never want an actor to say or do in your presence again? How are they sabotaging <coughs> themselves? Well, a technical thing coughing on microphone. Mm. Wow. They don't even realize what they've just done. They're, they're unconscious about it, yeah. really. That's, that's one thing that's, you know, hey, mm -hmm. that's one. Number two, um, questioning uh, any judgment that the director has just given you. Mm. Mm. You just asked, you're here to get the input, and now you're questioning it? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, good. if they do too much of that, they're never coming back anyway. Because right. I, you know, life is too short, mm -hmm. and there are a few people waiting to audition that would appreciate coming yes. in. Uh, I like people who come in and have studied the craft, who so that social grace is part of what they do. Again, life is too short. Why be a pain in the you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, come in, get there early. On time is, is early. early. Thank you. How early is it, good? You know, in our office goes to such pains to transfer the information mm -hmm. to the agent. Here's what they're reading for. Here's the amount of time, the, the script, how long the script is. Make sure they get there early. Okay? They know we have a reputation. We run on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right? Yeah. If you have a 10 o'clock call, don't come walking in at 10 o'clock because I'm ready for you and you haven't studied the and script. You don't know so exactly. now I'm going to get backed up. Now, why that's so important today is because we have something today we didn't have 23 years ago. We have a daily traffic problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People who are usually on time have problems getting there. Right. Completely. Right. So I always run on time or try mm -hmm. it. Okay, so yeah. be there so you can study the script. And like I point out to him, there are no small scripts. Every single script can be life-changing. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm watching and listening to you. Yeah. Voiceover, I'm still watching you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see somebody and say to Kathy or to Liz when I get back to the house, I've made notes. I don't just audition, I'm making notes. Mm -hmm. So and so can do crab ass if you ask him to do it. I heard him do something. I stimulated, blah, blah, blah. You know, there can be a poignant moment. Now, if you don't get there on time, I don't have time to do that. Exactly. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On time is early. So, so how, how, yeah, but how early? Like, what do you guys appreciate? If your call time's at 10 o'clock, you should be there at what time? 10 minutes early. 10 yeah, minutes early. Yeah, I was going to say 10, okay. 10, 15 minutes 10, early. A half an hour 15. is too yeah. early. Yeah, I would say. Well, that's it, why you can sit in your car and yeah, do something on your right. phone. <laughs> But better to be early, you know, right. too early and then come in. Well, we yeah. often have not only the script there, but we often have a video. Oh, yeah. A lot of times, you know, voiceover is post-production. When we get mm -hmm. the call, yeah. they're out of time, out of money, out of patience. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, we need this uh, tomorrow. This is going on the air in a few days. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what happens is we'll often have a rough cut that they'll share with us and sometimes let us share it with yeah. the actors. Oh, how very great, important. How great so to see that. Nice. Or sometimes the music. Yep. Uh, or sometimes they'll at least let us show a storyboard yep. uh, or, you know, you know, sketches, you know, yeah. and uh, so they've got to take yeah. all that in. Yeah. And then back to things that actors should do. Read the instructions that we go to great pains to print out direction, to print out the different prototypes that might be access uh, mm -hmm. suitable. Yeah. Don't walk around. Well, no, with everyone, you're yeah. you're on the same team. I can't. You know, you're, you know yeah. so it's like everyone's. You're rooting for every oh, yeah. one of those yeah. twenty four people that yeah. come in. They look good. We look good. Yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah. want them. Yeah. We want it. Make and, it difficult. And also, I mean, the job you're auditioning for today, like you said, mm -hmm. maybe something's coming out around the corner next week, and oh. you go, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I mean, so really, you may not book this job, but you're basically booking yourself yep. for something. Absolutely. In the future. Yep. Yeah. Um, is there any advice you could give quickly to people that are from another country yes. or another yes. you know town that you know yes. don't have access to the council? Yes. Account, in regards to yes, in regards to just auditioning from home on their own yes. without a director. Yes. Ready? Yes. In yes. every single profession, uh -huh. you get there by practicing your craft, and if you don't practice your craft every day. Someone who does is going to get the job. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I go back to sports again. When a guy is taken out of the lineup because he had a little injury or something, he has two or three days off, he has to get back into the lineup and he's not hitting as well because he's been away from seeing that ball zip in. Yeah. He's got to practice every day. She's got to practice every day. And what about people that, that don't have the benefits, mm -hmm. that they need to self-direct? Mm -hmm. Are there any... I mean, because you're basically yeah. acting, mm -hmm. you're engineering, you're directing, you are a mm -hmm. one-person yep. show in that booth or that closet of yours. Well, my first tip is uh, don't wear headsets mm -hmm. while you're recording yourself because you will be listening to your own voice. And then it goes, ba-da-ba-da, 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 ba-da-ba-da. And then the announcer meter goes off. Why? Because we hear a predictability in the pacing and the phrasing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now you're listening to your own voice, and you lost the truth. Whatever connection, emotional thing you were supposed to be, the truth of frustration or boyish snark, yep. you lost that because you're listening to your own voice. Yep. So stop listening to your own voice, get those headsets off. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? I think, personally, that your first take is usually your best because it's your most instinctive Yep. And I then agree. people people yeah. do it again and again and again mm -hmm. and again. And cobble it yes. together. They, they, and do. Yeah. Yeah. they do. I agree. So I your agree. instincts should be guiding you mm -hmm. on that. When you're self-directing, don't read a script uh, through without getting your uh, discernible attitude in your mind before you begin reading through. Mm -hmm. Don't test yourself and say, oh, I'm going to just do a read-through uh, just to get familiar with the words. Yeah. Why waste cultivating the emotion because the emotion is going to be the thing you need mm -hmm. okay so yeah. look at the script mm -hmm. see you know if it's one of our script it's going to have directions mm -hmm. on it and That's for right. attitude right. and try to reflect mm -hmm. again back to the method mm -hmm. try to reflect back on talking about when you were married and somebody gave you this egg thing and <laughs> you lost your voice yeah. and oh my god <laughs> All right. Can I add on? I to brought that? you right back to it, and now we're all responsive to the same right. story she told, right? right? right. And I'm reflecting on it. And you got it right. Have you ever done any stand-up, Harvey? <laughs> uh, because you I are get asked funny, to man. do it every day. Harvey Kalmanson at the Laugh Factory this weekend only. Oh, I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I'm asked about that. I have my stuff 
all over town, mm -hmm. all over the country, with stand-up actors and different actors that come in and say, can I use that? And I, <laughs> I said, sure, I'm not in the business. And they use it and I get the biggest charge. Comedy in. writer may be your next profession. Mm -hmm. Do you I want it to add something to that? Yes. Uh, people set up before they actually say the first line on paper. And sometimes it's like a button, a little yeah, thing right. that we call a lead-in, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Lead-ins are not just words or phrases. Lead-ins come in other forms. For example, breathing, your breath. I once directed an audition. This is for someone who's on their own, directing yep, themselves. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. But case in point, I once directed a woman, and it was for an antiperspirant thing, and she was supposed to be an athlete walking off the court and so glad that she used that product, mm. right? So I'm getting ready to slate for her, and I look, and she is doing jumping jacks so that... When she steps up to the mic, she sounds like she just walked off a court, and her breath just supported her on it. How great is that? Right. When you're at home, why not do the same thing? Yes, if yes. you and and you know and facial expressions and, and gestures and, and body language and and face all that stuff works. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to be by yourself, why not do it mm -hmm. yep. to set Love yourself it. up? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very yeah. good. I like that. Good. Well, that's all we got for part two with uh, Kathy and Harvey Kalmanson. We hope you guys have enjoyed the show. They are so wonderful, aren't they? Unbelievable. Man, I love the passion. Don't forget to keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you guys. We love you. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Leo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosvetrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.